So the many species of plants that used to occur in disturbed areas of land, uh, and then when farming took off 8,000 years ago, they then became associated with arable landscapes. And then the question is, how do we then look after these plants now that uh, arable landscapes have become more intensified and, uh, and have fewer plants within them? I'm here at Ranscombe Farm, a uh, plant life reserve, uh, and um, one of the many species of interest is the corn cockle. So I'm here with the plant life uh, manager, uh, reserve manager. Tell us, Ben, what's, um, what's the corn cockle story? Well, the uh, thing with corn cockle is, um, and uh, just looking at it, um, it's, it's one of the more uh, attractive uh, arable species. I mean, it really is uh, really quite beautiful, really. Um, I mean, here we've got a patch of uh, around about, I'm guessing, around about 500 here in this, um, in this patch of the field. Um, and this was uh, thought to be uh, incredibly common um, in the farmed landscape, in the arable farmed landscape. Um, certainly in the early 20th century uh, and then uh, various, uh, various, various techniques that, that, that were used uh, by farmers to try and, to try and remove it uh, would, was done very successfully. Um, it was a weed effectively. Uh, I'm aware that it might have made a uh, flower uh, go sort of bitter and grey in colour and uh, so yeah it was something that was obviously they wanted to eradicate. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, not like a lot of arable plants, um, this is, you know, this is a, has happened with a lot, you know, due to more powerful herbicides and, and fertilizers that have really boosted the crop and outcompeted other arable plants. Um, and also seed cleaning techniques and things. Um, and that's not putting blame on farmers, you know, I mean, this is, this is um, you know, it's a societal thing. I mean, that's, that's what society demanded, um, that we wanted cheaper food and all that sort of thing. And uh, ultimately, you know, from the middle of the 20th century, uh, all that was done very successfully, but it was, a lot was lost in the process. You know, we lost a huge amount of color from the countryside in that process and, 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 and all the other, um, you know, ecological benefits that having these plants um, added so the thing with uh corn cockle um is that uh yeah as i said this, this, as you said this was largely you know it was extinct um pretty much and uh here it it, it um a population um remained here at ranscom um and uh you know we managed to keep this going uh through working with our tenant farmer through um an environmental stewardship uh scheme um in order to, you know, to, to, to keep it going simply by cultivating the land um as you would in an arable context um and that creates the disturbance and so on that it needs um and yeah we're in an absence of, of chemicals and things like that then uh, it does really well and i think last year uh i think there was probably in the region about 100 plants and then that sets seed and now there's another 500 spread further so you know you keep that up uh, and there's no reason why it shouldn't you know to sustain you know on and on so this is a reserve for arable weeds and uh, and beautiful so uh, has this affected other species too uh yeah i mean there's 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 when when well, ransom's been going now for uh, about 20 years and certainly when when uh, the reserve was set up it was thought that broadleaf cudweed, which is one of our key endangered species, um, about 95% of the whole population of, of, of UK population of broadleaf cudweed was here at Ranscombe. In fact, not just here, but in one particular field, mm -hmm. yeah, in a 10 acre field. And um, again, working with the tenant farmer uh, in order to, you know, to, to, to do more management across other parts of the site um you know those those populations have just you know expanded and expanded um so um again that thing where you know for a lot of these species the seed is already there in the soil and mm -hmm. it just needs the right conditions so that's the great thing about them although although you know they've uh, they've been lost often they're, they're, they're very much still in the landscape mm -hmm. it just needs the right conditions to bring them back and the mayweed's done very well too hasn't it yeah this stinking chamomile yes yeah. yeah that's it so uh i mean this uh it's 
pretty much the main ground cover over a lot of these arable um, fields and margins. Um, it just does exceptionally. I mean, there are hundreds of thousands of these. Um, and to think that this is a, um, you know, this is a, a plant that's threatened with extinction. I mean, it's one, one lower down the red list than endangered. Of course, you wouldn't think this when you look across the whole thing because it is absolutely everywhere. So we, um, we did an analysis once uh, looking at uh, the rarity of plants of weeds in arable fields and showed there was almost no data. It was very difficult to, to document that decline. But we looked at the data on weed cleaning of cereals and showed that there's a 95% decline in, in these um, associated plants over the century. So there's been this enormous decline and it's kind of obvious, you know, you look at the old paintings and they're full of, you know, cornfields are full of poppies, etc. But in terms of sh documenting that, it's actually been really difficult. Mm. But it's, it's clearly that the arable plants are one of our more threatened groups uh, and it's great to be here at Ranscombe Farm where they're doing so much to look after them. Thank you. No worries.